First st stop on the Bobblehead Tour, Rosa Crucium, I think that's his name. Oh yes, Egyptian Museum and Planetarium. Yes, this melee vault boy, well, he looks like he could build a pyramid with that hammer. So, yeah. So let's just set him next to this statue with a pharaoh and a ram. Okay, too obvious. Nope. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. Huh. Oh, the Legoland store. Uh, oh, they're closed. Nope. I found this store with uh, games and collectibles. <laughs> Hello, next stop. And the Bay Area tour on the way to San Francisco. Oh, the Shabbat Science Center, Space and Science Center. Let's see, bidding for the science bobblehead. Right under the statue. Uh, the museum's closed, so can't go in, but right here is good. Yeah, it looks like one big atom that the, uh, you know, that the children of the atom would worship. Or looks like a gyroscope. Something about space. Next up, I'm in uh, what looks like uh, yeah, it looks like a suburb of Oakland. I know it's actually pretty nice here. So what brings me to Oakland? Well, that would be our next stop, which is a bit of history. The Black Panther Party Memorial Signal. And I'll put this where the small guns will go. Right beside it. Next up, I'm actually in Chinatown, Oakland. Yeah, looking for a place to put the unarmed bobblehead. Figured there'd be some martial arts schools in the area. Well, it's actually too late to find the Wing Chun School in the Wellness Center. But I think this, uh, oh, this would be a great place for a fight scene in front of this dragon. Yes, yeah, Spirit of the Dragon. Find the unarmed bobblehead here. Next stop. Currently at B University of Berkeley. Yeah, yeah. How about somewhere near that tower? Oh, what'd you know? This would be a good place for a bobblehead. Right here on a sundial. Yes, tells time without the use of electricity. Only the sun. There you go, intelligence. Right on the sundial. Avenue toward Hercules. Next up, fitting to put the strength bobblehead in a place called Hercules. I thought San Francisco was my chance to start fresh. Next up, Golden Gate Bridge. What can I say? It's the Golden Gate Bridge. Oh, there's a lot of runners running. I think someone's gonna, I think fitting for the uh, endurance. How about I put it behind this symbolic Girder here.
I am looking at Fort Point, which I would like to put this big guns bobblehead. However, I am told it is closed, so this is the closest I can put it. So search around here before you get to this uh, checkpoint, which is blocking off pedestrian access. Sorry. Way out there is Alcatraz. But I don't want to pay for the ferry. That would cost money. I'm spending enough on this trip so far. So, best I can do, put the lockpick guy here. Oh, let's see, where is it? Berth 16, 695, six, oh, 596, 658. Yep, I'll just put the, the lockpick guy in this area. Go past the At the next stop sign, turn right. Next stop, I'm in the, well, on the back end of Treasure Island. And, and we have this area, which is owned by the local fire department. No smoking, diesel combustible. Well, don't forget any cigarettes around here. And, and of course you can find the explosive bobblehead. Charismatic! Hmm, bubblehead of charisma, I see! Hmm. Yep, bubblehead of charisma! Here at Land's End, and I find what looks to be oh, this is a stone structure with graffiti. I'm gonna make you all work for this one for perception here. Hunter's Point, which is uh, the uh, like a construction district. And how about I put my repair bobblehead right here? Hospitals are always fitting for the uh, medicine bobblehead. Find it here at Mills Pen Peninsula. I'm here at the Carolans Chateau, a very fancy, pretty expensive place. Hmm. How about I put the sneak bobblehead here? Why not? Sneak. For the record, it's called Belmont Movement. Agility. I have the agility bobblehead here. 
And uh, this, I'm here at a rock climbing place. Let's see, yeah, climbing, yoga, fitness, and Belmont. Oh, look, there's a hiding place. Last stop on the bobblehead tour, Google, as it takes up a lot of energy. And look, there's the energy bobblehead. Actually, we got one more stop. Hmm. Fun fact, the platinum chip. It was made here in Sunnyvale. I've, I see Apple, I see Windows, I see Facebook. Hmm. Robco's got to be around here. All right. I found the platinum chip. This is all really cool, man. Thanks for doing this. I've lived in Sunnyvale for 16 years, and I've always loved that. It's the birthplace of the platinum chip. I had a freak out the first time I played in New Vegas, and Mr. House said it was created in Sunnyvale on October 22nd, 2077. You see, it was October 22nd, the first time I saw that scene, and I was in Sunnyvale. 67 years, but otherwise the same day. I totally thought my Xbox had scanned the, the date and my location or something. Wow, what a trip. Long drive to San Francisco, long drive back. It was such a beautiful city. It was worth it. 20 bobbleheads plus a platinum chip, all th laid out throughout San Francisco. Quite the adventure. You know, I posted this on Reddit, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Imager. I appreciate the support. Man, of course, I've gotten some questions. So here we go. Why San Francisco? Well, Bobblegeddon is my uh, project to go to different cities and spread 20 Fallout bobbleheads found in Fallout 3, Fallout 4, and 76, and maybe even future Fallout games. Spread them across cities that I think would look good in a Fallout game. Make this, make it a real life Easter egg hunt. Much like how you find bobbleheads in, in the games, well, I'm giving people the opportunity to find a bobblehead in real life. And San Francisco is my fifth city after Wasteland Weekend in 2017, followed by San Diego, Los Angeles, Phoenix, Arizona, and now San Francisco. Of course, there's my movie, Lost New, a Fallout Snow Globe road trip, which is about leaving snow globes that were in Fallout New Vegas throughout Las Vegas, which I've done twice already. So why San Francisco? It was the next city. Who knows where I'll go next? Littering. Am I doing, is what I'm doing considered littering? By definition, yes, but mostly harmless, pretty harmless. Yes, some call it littering with ex extra steps. I don't blame you for calling that, but there's no need to get offended by this. It's just one figurine, a good looking figurine, spread out miles from each other. It's not causing a health crisis. It's not causing environmental damage. I'm not throwing them in the water or the ocean. It's not gonna be in the fish. It's not gonna affect your food supply. It's just 20 figurines spread out. It's not gonna hurt anyone. Next question. People brought up San Francisco's reputation for homeless people and poop in the streets. Uh, this is new to me, but it's been known there for years. And yes, I saw, I saw plenty of tents in San Francisco. Even though I was in the main San Francisco area for a day, you know, I was in Oakland and San Jose the day before, then on Tuesday, yes, I was driving around San Francisco. Yeah, I saw, I saw some tents. It didn't look as bad as what I saw in Los Angeles last year. I mean, I don't keep up on the news on homeless, but yes, San Francisco does have a homeless problem, and 
that does lead to the poop in the streets and it, it gets nasty. But I didn't see any poop. I didn't put any bobbleheads in the poop. I just hide bobbleheads. But yes, San Francisco does have homeless. That's all I'll say. Car breaks. Oh uh, yeah, something else. Uh, there have been, San Francisco has had an epidemic, a different epidemic. That is, car break-ins. In fact, it's gotten so bad that there is a campaign of signs all around San Francisco. I saw them in the Golden Gate Bridge. I saw them in the city. Signs that say, take your stuff. Don't leave any valuables in your car. Lock your car. And I think I did see a, just a broken car window with a, with a piece of cardboard in it. In it so okay now whenever I do post my bobbleheads which I this is like my again my fifth city uh, I get the subject of the Boston bomb scare uh, from I think it was around 2007 and and it involved LED fixtures promoting the upcoming Aqua Teen Hunger Force movie it, it, yes it was meant to promote the Aqua Teen Hunger Force movie and there was a bomb scare caused by these LED Moonanite fixtures. I've actually talked about this at a panel during Comic-Con. I like to say be responsible. Maybe this, uh, I think it could backfire. And then let's remember the uh, Boston Moonanite panic. Yep, we all remember that back in the seven. So yeah, these artists were hired to promote Aqua Teen Hunger Force, uh, the movie. And uh, they put these uh, LED Moonanite uh, uh, fixtures uh, in the subway, but you know, they light up, they have batteries attached. That's kind of similar to an IED, and it shut down Boston for the day. Probably All right. Yeah, there's either. a little fun fact about that as well. And ultimately, the uh, president of Adult Swim had to step down from that. And then following that, they instilled a new uh, president of uh, Cartoon Network that said, hmm, I did some polling, and it turns out kids like live action TV as well. So you can uh, blame that little dip in Cartoon Network's quality on that guy. Fortunately, he is no longer with Cartoon Network and things are back, but you can all ultimately say that bombing in that dip of like where Cartoon Network, yeah, 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 yeah. Bam, that is that point you can trace it to, the moon and nights. All right, all uh, all right Matt Dunford, uh, Bastion of Information. Well, I'm, I'm amazed people still remember that 15 years later even though there really was a bomb that went off in Boston uh, some years later during the marathon. Even those marathoners were, went to go donate blood after running that, that long. But yes, when people think of Boston bomb, bombs, they think of that incident. And people bring that up in my posts. So, you know what, what I'm doing is different. These are just 20 small figurines. I hide. There's nothing harmful about them. It won't, again, it won't pollute the environment. But, you know, the thing about these LED fixtures at the time, again, this is the post 9-11 world where everything just has to be more secure, more security. See something, say something. And it's been noted that, that those LED Moonanites had components similar to that of IEDs or makeshift bombs. It could have been avoided with better planning, but it happened anyway. And hey, the guys who uh, were involved with that marketing campaign, well, they've had a sense of humor about it and well, the charges were dropped. So you know what? I'm not looking to cause a bomb scare. I doubt this will, I doubt if I did it in Boston, which I hope to do, I doubt that will cause a bomb scare. Okay, I get asked about geocaching. You know what? I know what geocaching is. I have the app. I've even visited some in, uh, in the city of San Diego. Sometimes they look like bird boxes, but some geocaches you, you just can't find. Even the descriptions are like, the muggles rough it up. So yeah, the thing about the bobbleheads is that I like them when they're in plain sight, just like in the game. You travel throughout the game, you visit, you wander the city, you see the and you see what you see a bobblehead. You can't have that same effect if it's in a in a bird box in a birdhouse. I've actually put a bobblehead in a birdhouse, but uh, I didn't really get a response back on it. But it just it's just more fun when you put the bobbleheads in plain sight, and a and people are like, "What's that? Do I take it?" 
I don't see that reaction for myself, but it's just something I imagine. So yes, geocaching is always an issue. Well, not an issue, always an option, but I have a different way of doing things. So yeah, download the geocaching app. But when I do Bobblegeddon, I, I just avoid geocaching altogether. All right, someone said something about Microsoft is gonna sue me. Well, Microsoft does own Bethesda and Obsidian, so so who knows if there's going to be another Fallout game or even another Fallout game by Obsidian who made Fallout New Vegas. But will they sue me? I have not been contacted by Obsidian, Bethesda, Zenimax, Microsoft. I think I, I think Josh Sawyer may have seen my post about the snow globes years back, but nope. No one from Bethesda has congratulated me. I hope they do, but you know what? I just do this for fun. I like doing it. But if I get any recognition, well, I'm waiting. Okay, and what's the cost of all this? Okay, so, uh, uh, 3D printers, you can get one for around $300, $400. I've used one of those cheap Chinese clones, but now I use a Creality CR10, that's what I recommend. They come in different sizes, but the bigger the printer, the bigger the price. And spools of filament, they go for about mm, average $22 each. If, you, if that's what you want, that it will cost hundreds of dollars, but you will have a 3D printer and you can get a lot out of it. Okay, so I enjoyed my trip to San Francisco, very colorful. Now I look forward to Bobble getting L6. So if you got any suggestions, Leave me any feedback. I will be making another documentary uh, related to Las Vegas, New Vegas, and snow globes. And, you know, just how Fallout is being seen these days. That'll be the next documentary. And what, and how many bobbleheads were found? Uh, I think six so far. And the platinum chip. So, there's 14 bobbleheads you gotta go find. Check them out for me. Uh, thank you. Thank you for watching the debriefing of the of Bobble Get in Five, San Francisco. Hey, you know maybe the, a Fallout game can take place in San Francisco. Why that Kellogg guy from Fallout Four was from San Francisco. The Obsidian actually uh, original script for New Vegas was San Francisco was destroyed, but Bethesda wanted them to change that just in case they guess San Francisco ends up in a future Fallout game. Maybe it will. I'd rather take Fallout San Francisco over New Vegas 2. It would just be a, always like a fresh start in a, in a Fallout game, rather than just retread the same map in any game. Okay, that's enough thank yous, so this is it. Goodbye, until next time.